Well, I wire brushed some of the dirt off the outside. We'll clean the dirt out. Now, I also run and pick out as much of that crease as I easily can. There's a lot of roll of this shoe, and you can see where there's not even a crease around here anymore. Part of that is why I've rasped into it, and I'll do this as a final thing on the new shoes. I'll rasp a rolled toe in because of her navicular. And part of that is just where she's got this, I'll show you with the new shoe, she just got it worn down and thin. I like to use a pair of crease nail pullers. They will reach in and grab and pop that nail out. I'll go to my regular pull-offs and show. As you grab that shoe underneath and pry, you know, that whole shoe is flexible and it moves. So you don't pop a shoe and a nail off like you do with a regular steel shoe. So that's where the crease nail pullers come in. They just loosen up that nail and then pull it out. These nail heads are jammed fairly deeply into the shoe because I've used it so many times over and over. For trimming, for nailing, we don't need any other tools than your standard shoeing job. Whatever the farrier has currently for tools and equipment, that'll work for these shoes. Clean the dirt out, we'll touch up around the frog here, get that cleaned up a little bit. Now again, because of her navicular, we want to maintain a, a fairly upright angle. I'm going to leave her heels alone. I don't trim a lot of sole out. And as you'll see here in just a moment, I actually like to leave a flat spot in the sole that the shoe will rest on. You can see it's starting to come here. You can see here, we've got a flat spot in the sole all the way around. Very much like you trim for a barefooted horse. What this allows me to do, the shoe will rest right on that flat sole. And as the foot grows longer, that stops the shoe from buckling to the inside. A steel shoe, if we rested on this flat portion, you would have pressure points and you'd have a sore horse. You look at the steel shoes and one of the selling points is that they are concave on the hoof surface, trying to avoid that sole pressure. With a happy hoof wear shoe, we need that correct pressure. All right, well, we're ready to start uh, putting some shoe sizes on here and determining how to, how to choose a shoe, si a shoe size of the, that is appropriate. So I pulled out three shoes here. This black one is a double lot. And when I make a, a choice for shoe size, it's just a matter of like any other shoe. Hold the foot up, put the shoe on, and see how it fits. Uh, for the sake of you folks seeing it with the camera, I'll put it flush on this inside wall, and you can see on this double lot how I've got a little hoof wall exposed. It's also just barely coming back and covering the buttress. So it's, it's just a little bit short and a little narrow. So I don't really like the double lot. There's a single lot. Now again, flush on the inside with my fingers holding it, and we've got just a little exposure around the edge, so I like the width on this single lot, and our length is pretty good. Next size up is a number one. Flush on the inside, and I've got a lot of shoe exposed, so that the width is way too much. Since we can't shape these and change the width like you do with a steel or an aluminum shoe, you go a little oversized and cut it off. 
But in this case, on this number one, we'd actually cut into the crease. So we don't want that. And lengthwise, it's, it's quite a bit long, and there's just a lot to trim off the back. So number one's a little too big. My choice here for Grace, sing a lot. The shoe that we took off, this orange one, I cut the clip off of here. For purposes today, just to show you the differences, I'll leave the clip on. And because it's polyurethane, you can cut it with your nippers. If I cut it, I, then I will also rasp this little bump off the front. Some failures do, some don't. I do on some horses, not on others. It all comes down to personal preference. There are no nail holes. We've got a crease, but no nail holes. Two feet, there's two ways of putting these shoes on. This first one, I'll just straight nail. Now, when you straight nail, that means that as the nail goes through the foot, oh, excuse me, as the nail goes through the shoe, it doesn't know if it's going through shoe or hoof. And so you have to compensate for the thickness of that shoe. And I'll show you here in detail. Let me get a couple of nails in so this shoe is solid. And then I'll show you the difference I, I make in my nailing angle. Just as with a steel shoe, I get a couple of nails started and then drive it through and twist it off. Now, if I was, we'll get the nail that I dropped there. If I was nailing a steel shoe, I would have, well, not quite that much, there we go. I would have an angle about like that through a steel shoe. Because we're nailing through the thickness of this polyurethane, I will tilt my nail a little more so it goes in deeper. It really doesn't go deeper into the foot because as it's going through that shoe, it starts to turn to come out. But you can see the two different slopes on that nail. So that's just a little adjustment that you need to make. And it will take two or three or four shoes to get used to it. It's not a big deal. Straighten this out where it was starting to bend. As a general rule of thumb, double lot shoes, I will use three nails on each side. Single lot, depending on the foot, sometimes I will go with four nails on each side, sometimes a three on each side. And the difference is if you've got a big wide rounded foot, kind of a flat foot, then I will typically just go with the, the four nails. I'll go ahead and put in my heel nails back here. I'll do it on Gracie just for visual purposes so you can see the difference. I do this more and more commonly now, putting in my heel nails, because as you saw with the pulling the shoe off with the pull-offs, we have some flexibility at the heels. So the heel nail does make this shoe a little more secure. But even with Grace, with a narrow heel, with the navicular, I'm not concerned about having that heel nail in because as I mentioned earlier, as this foot expands and contracts, these nails, I believe, are actually pivoting within the shoe, and so it's not bracing her heels. Even with the heel nails in, these feet are still expanding, the heels are still opening up and maintaining a nice wide open heel. Same as with a steel or aluminum shoe, once they're in, go through with your clinch block, set your nails, and you're good to go.